Hello and welcome back to another one of Zug's Guides on Broadside Gaming. Uh, if you've been watching my other guides so far, thank you very much. And also, please guys, uh, like and subscribe, it really does help. So, today we're going to be having a quick look at the Slayer. It's a class I've only picked up uh, recently, because, again, it's kind of like my... The reason why I'm not too fond of the Grail Knight, even though I know it's good, it's just it lacks a ranged weapon. I don't know people say, oh, why don't you use the Throwing Axe? I don't like the Throwing Axe. But yeah, so I've been trying it out, and I've still not quite completed Chaos Waste on Cataclysm on it, but I'm getting there. It's getting close. So, we shall have a quick look at the setup I'm using. So, first of all, we'll look at the talents. We're using Doomseeker, damaging multiple enemies in one swing with a melee weapon grants temporary health, max five enemies. Again, pretty standard across all the builds. I'm using Hack and Slash, because I am using uh, the Dual Axes and the Cog Hammer. So, the other two wouldn't be appropriate because they focus around using the same type of weapon. Hack and Slash just gives you a flat 5% crit chance. And the Smiter, again, pretty standard across all builds. I'll just leave it there for a second so you have a quick read of it. But yeah, it's pretty standard. Uh, Adrenaline Surge on max stacks of Trophy Hunter grants cooldown reduction for leap. This is really good because you're going to be wanting to leap a lot. Grimnir's Force, hitting an enemy with a charge attack gives damage reduction... Or it reduces damage taken by 40% for 5 seconds. This is also really good, because, you know, you're quite squishy, but this is going to help. And then I'm using No Escape. Leap's attack speed buff also increases movement speed by 25% for the duration. Which basically means you're going to be leaping around a lot, and getting in and out with the dual axes, killing stuff, getting out, jumping back in. This is not a build you want to try and front line and just stand there and tank stuff with. This is uh, very much played kind of like the Shade. But for the weapon setup, so as I said, I'm using the dual axes, because I really like the dual axes, and the properties on it, I'm using stamina and power versus skaven and swift slaying. Because the the dual axes have a very low stamina on them as basics, so you're gonna have to pump that up just to try and uh, give yourself a survivability. And the cog hammer, I'm using crit chance and block cost reduction. We have Swift Slaying. So basically, I'll give you a quick rundown of, what, of how I use the two weapons. Uh, if it is just one giant horde of slave rats or just trash, I'll usually just grab the cog hammer and use it to stagger and just cleave through them. If it's a medium sized pack but with elites mixed in, I will switch over to the dual axes and I will prioritize killing the elites and the specials and the heavy armor and the super armor and all that sort of thing. Because that is what the dual axes are for. They are for deleting elites. But don't forget, with the cog hammer, the heavy attack does turn it into an axe attack. So you can heavy attack and pretty much one-shot Chaos Knights on Legend. Not so much on Cataclysm, but still, it is an option for you. And then for the necklace, again, I'm using stamina to boost my uh, ability to block. Because as you can see, I'm not running a huge amount of block cost reduction on this build. So the stamina shields are there to uh, alleviate that somewhat. Then I'm using Health and Bark Skin. And then onto the Charm, I'm using Power vs. Chaos and Attack Speed. And I'm using Concoction, because I just quite like Concoction. You know, it's, it, you don't get as long duration on the potions, but you get a boost of all of them. So for a few seconds, you become an absolute killing machine. And then on the Trinket, I'm using Curse Resistance. Again, as I usually just farm through Legend, I always have one of these equipped. And Crit Chance. And again, Shrapnel, just because monsters take 20% extra damage when you throw a bomb at them, which is just really useful. But yeah, as I said, um, I'm getting to grips with the Slayer. This is the build I'm mostly using. There are other builds, and I'll probably make more videos on them as I get more comfortable with it. But this is just the one I've been uh, training myself with. Yeah, hopefully, guys, uh, this video has been informative for you. And, you know, I'll do my usual... Look, I'm smacking a dummy. There you go. But yeah. Uh, just a quick note of the dual axes. There's not a huge amount of cleave on them, but the DPS on them is super high. You just have to learn to move a lot. And as you can see, with the added stamina on the weapon and the neck, I have more stamina shields to be able to soak up a block if I need to. But you'd mostly want to be trying to block and deal with that sort of thing with the cog hammer. But yeah, that's it guys. It's not a massive guide today. It's just a quick overlook of how I play the Slayer and how I'm uh, 
learning with it. So thank you all very much for watching. Please like, subscribe and hit the bell for notification. I will be throwing up some more guides this week. Uh, probably more dwarf related as that is what I've been uh, filling around with lately. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all again next time. See you later.